when I graduated high school, um, dabbled briefly with the idea of going to the local community college and studying music just because I had spent the last couple of years in high school just throwing myself into it, took some classroom. I never took private lessons. Well, I did take a couple private lessons, but I, uh, not in school. I didn't study band or orchestra. I uh, took like a music theory class in, in high school. And so my parents encouraged me maybe to, to look at the music program at the community college, which I signed up for. And at the same time that summer, I joined a band called The Natives okay. in Syracuse, whose bass player, they were, the personnel changed. The bass player and guitar player were leaving. So me and this other guy came in and they had a record out and there was a very thriving uh, rock club scene in the early 80s up in central New York where you could, you could, uh, you know, our, our gear went around in a truck and we drove around in a van and we played three to five, six nights a week, probably within a three or four hour radius of Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of guys made their living. And it was a, it was a cool experience because you really, it very quickly, got uh, experience as a professional musician, you know, playing gigs every night. And, uh, Let's say you hone your job. Yeah, and there was, a, there was a, quite a market for it. There were bands playing original music and cover music mm -hmm. and mixtures of both. And the bands that I, before I moved to New York, I played in a, in a couple of bands up there wow. that, that did, did just that. We played in combinations of original music and cover music. And, uh, and we worked. We played every night. And uh, it was great. It was a great experience. That's, that's and how you learn your craft. Yeah, and it really fed that drive to like, you know, that started in the bedroom, mm -hmm. you know, giving concerts on the tennis rackets as a kid going, man, this is something I could do, you know, to a couple of years later actually doing it and showing my folks, yeah, man, I'm making a, I'm making a living. I moved into an apartment, I'm paying rent and I hadn't worked a job, you know, I'm just still playing bass. So, so it, you know, it all s sort of supported that, uh, Way and the next thing you knew, I was down here in New York. Uh, well, yeah, doing tell us about when you moved to. New I York came City. down to New York uh, with a guy that I knew from upstate that was working as a booking agent down here, and he got the idea that we could put together a bar band like they had up in Central New York, and we could run it out of New York. So we basically came, we put a bunch of guys together down here with the idea that we were going to go up to Canada and tour this whole bar circuit up in Canada, and we did. It was. Uh, it was, you know, fairly successful for a while, but it, if you think about the time in the in the mid '80s, uh, drinking ages were starting to go up in bars, right? right? 18 to 21, DWI became an issue, and yep. the whole bar scene just started, mm -hmm. for that circuit anyway, started to to change. And we ended up, uh, an agent that he worked with uh, was representing Billy J. Kramer, okay. who was relocating from uh, from the UK. Mm -hmm to the States and he needed a band to go out. And so we kind of jumped over from being this top 40 cover band to being Billy J. Kramer's band and started, we did a tour with Billy and uh, that was great fun. And you're playing with a guy that had hit records and, and a, a great body of work, Lennon and McCartney tunes for the most part. Yeah. And uh, that led to uh, backing up the lead singer from the Shirelles, Shirley Alston Reeves on that okay. tour. And one thing led to another. It's, it's, uh, it's 30 years later now, and I still, that's what I do. I play bass for people that had hit records in the 60s and 70s. And, you know, <laughs> Lou, you guys saw me with Lou right, out at right, Westbury. Right. And, uh, you know, it's changed over the years. There were points that I would, would work for the artist directly. At one point in the 80s, I was working for Shirley, and I, w I was her guy. And we were doing 150 gigs a year. But that circuit has changed. And... Uh, you know, now I, I, I work for a great guy from Long Island, uh, Pete Master Polo. He has a production company, and part of that company is he provides musicians for these. The, the show that you saw, right. he contracts the players, and we go out and back up on these multiple act shows. They'll have five or six groups, and anybody that doesn't bring a bass player, they get me. Wow. So, you know, that's, that's kind of my bread and butter right now. I mean, I've been, and like I said, I've been doing it uh, in some form or another for, for 30 years. Wow.